Hi, I'm Mike O'Hanion, Client Technology Specialist from Dell. And today I'm here to review the Dell 7230 Rugged Extreme Tablet, uh, the one I have here. Uh, one thing I do want to note, I do work for Dell. Um, however, this is my own uh, Dell YouTube channel. So if I make a mistake, I say something wrong, uh, I own it, that's on, on me. Um, the other thing I do want to note, if you look in the uh, description of this video, I've put minute marks on different topics. So if there are things you're more interested in, you can jump directly to those parts of the video and watch that rather than having to watch the whole video. Before we dig into the 7230, let me explain uh, the family of, of Dell rugged PCs that we have. Um, and as of recording this video, January or July of 2023, uh, right now we have three offerings in our family um, spoiler alert before the end of the year we'll probably have a fourth offering uh, available to you um, one thing about the Doug, dell rugged pcs uh, we started uh, the rugged in the rugged business back in 2007 so we've been here for 16 years uh, on top of it we are the only tier one manufacturer of rugged pcs which means you get the whole dell supply chain uh, and support uh, for these products. So you think about uh, being able to get these things on a global um, uh, global availability and the lead times um, that, that it takes, you know, that's what it, you get from a tier one uh, manufacturer. Also the service and support. So you have uh, service and support capabilities that span the globe. Uh, you have on-site next business day, uh, support and service for it. So everything you would expect out of your precision, Optiplex and Latitude, you also get in the uh, rugged line of products. Um, so uh, right here, I've got a sampling of uh, the three different models. So we've got uh, two what we call uh, fully ruggedized or rugged extreme is, is what we'll call it. Uh, and we also have one semi rugged or, um, you know, what we call harsh uh, conditions or just regular rugged is what we call that. Uh, this is me. These two are made for extreme conditions. These are made for harsh conditions. Um, there's a lot that you can learn from the numbers on here. Uh, so it's a little bit of, of an of a insider decoder ring here. So the first number represents the platform. And today under our rugged devices, we really have two classifications, uh, semi-rugged and fully rugged. Uh, five uh, would represent semi-rugged and a seven representing a uh, fully rugged device. Uh, the second number, um, which is great to know, is the screen size. So um, a one being a 10 inch, a two being 12 inch, 13, 14, all the way, I guess we can go to eight, uh, is 18 inch um, display. So that second number represents the screen size. Uh, the third number is the generation of the uh, tablet or, or the rugged. So now, right now, the current lineup is in the 30s um, to the threes. Uh, next year, if we bring out another product, uh, it would be the fours and then the fives and so on. Uh, when you get to uh, uh, nine, it flips over like an odometer a car back to zero. And finally, the last number uh, typically represents the processor. Uh, just note there's no hard and fast rule as to why we'd use a one versus a zero. Um, just note that it would mean there's something different about the processor. Currently, there are no uh, ones in our uh, rugged uh, lineup. They're all zeros, uh, meaning we don't have a, a, a special processor uh, model version of it. But if you see a one, just ask your uh, Dell rep what that means on that model. So we talk about rugged. What does it mean to be rugged? And I, I joke here, right? I uh, put that underneath the sink and, and ran water under it. It's more than just, you know, getting a system wet or someone that uh, is clumsy and drops it. So you decide to give them a rugged so they stop breaking it. If they're just a clumsy end user, uh, just give them an accidental damage uh, protection warranty to uh, cover breakage. Uh, but what does it mean to truly, truly be uh, a, a rugged device? Um, one, we start talking about the specifications. Uh, one of the specifications that you hear a lot of is called Milstead um, certifications. In particular, there's two types of Milstead certifications. There is a, um, well, there's really one, but there's two levels of it. There's a Milstead 18 uh, or 810G, and there's an 810H. 
Uh, A10H just came a few years after the uh, A10G. It just added some more tests and some more um, classifications or definitions of ruggedness. And really what that test is, it's a military test to take devices uh, in um, outdoor conditions and uh, un, you know, in different variety of outdoor conditions to test the durability of those devices. So uh, that is one thing that is tested against. The other thing you'll hear is uh, an IP uh, rating uh, or international protection rating, and I'll get into that as well. Um, but first of all, you know, the first thing people think about are um, drop testing and, and the Milstead test has a drop test. The uh, 7230 tablet here um, is certified um, we, uh, under the Mil uh, Milstead uh, testing. Uh, we took this tablet, uh, one model uh, or one unit, test unit, and dropped it 78 times from both 36 inches, which is basically the you know, table height here, um, 78 times without, without any damage. Uh, we also dropped it from 48 inches, which is roughly four feet, uh, 78 times as well, uh, with no damage, uh, to the device. So you think about table drop, yep, that's, that's normal. When you start talking about four feet, you're talking about people on, you know, possibly on a ladder, uh, or even a forklift is a great example because you're sitting up and you're sitting up higher and you drop it and it falls onto the concrete. Uh, so that's one of the first things people uh, think about. Uh, the second is water, right? Um, the rain tests. Uh, there's a different levels between semi-rugged and um, rugged. You know, a semi-rugged, like in the 5430 I showed there earlier, uh, you can spill water on it. Um, you know, there's certain degree angles to it. Um, but in a rugged extreme like this, it will take blowing water, water under pressure, water at all angles. It doesn't matter which way you come come at it. Uh, it is uh, that water resistant. Uh, now, is it certified to be uh, dunked underwater? Uh, not necessarily, though there's a lot of videos of people taking this and dumping it in, into uh, into a mud puddle and cleaning it off. Um, the only issues you really have is you want to make sure that all the ports are, are sealed if you did something like that. So um, because if you get something into the ports there, then you can cause uh, some damage. But as you saw there, I sprayed it pretty, uh, pretty heartily um, with the uh, kitchen sink there and, and absolutely uh, no, no issues. Um, some of the other things that people don't think about when it comes to rugged uh, is temperature. Right? Um, these are certified uh, from working to conditions of minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, which is uh, minus 29, roughly uh, degrees Celsius, uh, all the way up to 145 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly uh, 63 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is operating condition. That's not just, you know, hey, the, the system can be off and running. That is actually operating and running. And um, you, you, you think about that lower temperature, the minus 20, um, you know, that's somewhat understandable. You go to really cold environments and it's possible to get down to minus 20, or if you're working in it, uh, freezers, things of that nature, um, you can see that, but you know, 145 degrees, uh, that's, that's pretty hot. Um, in fact, the hottest temperature ever recorded on earth was 134 degrees in Arizona. I think it was in like 1919 or something like that. Uh, so 145 degrees is hot. Where would you ever get that? When you think about your um, your car, your automobile, uh, in general, uh, when you have your uh, car off and left out uh, in the open for um, uh, 60 minutes, the inside temperature of the car typically is about 43 degrees warmer than the outside of the vehicle. Uh, so if you think about you know a 70 degree day, which is a pleasant day out, um, it's 113 degrees inside that vehicle. Uh, if it is a 100 degree day, it's 143 degrees inside that vehicle, uh, and this uh, tablet is certified to work in that condition. Now, I don't recommend anybody working in that condition because um, you know about 124 degrees Fahrenheit is about the lethal level for a human being. You know, it's pretty rare to survive in, in any prolonged period at 124 degrees and above. So uh, this is really, really rugged when it comes to those extreme temperatures of high and low. Um, some of the other things that give it its rugged extreme versus uh, rugged um, are things like uh, EMI uh, or the electromagnetic interference um, certification on this. 
uh, meaning you can get next to say power lines, generators, anywhere that you have a lot of electrical interference and ha havoc on a, on a PC, uh, this is certified uh, to work in those conditions. Also um, in hazardous uh, locations. So you think about things like um, where there may be combustibles in the air, maybe a grain uh, silo or uh, somewhere that there's uh, uh, flammable uh, uh, chemicals uh, in the air. Uh, there's degrees of that hazardous location. So I'll post up here which versions it uh, is uh, certified for. Uh, but that primarily is the uh, difference in, um, you know, a, a rugged uh, device versus a, a non-rugged device. IP is another classification. Uh, you'll hear this like IP53, IP65. You know, what does that really mean? Uh, and IP is, uh, stands for International uh, protection or international protection rating, some called uh, sometimes called ingress uh, protection rating. It's really a classification against uh, intrusions of solid objects, everything from body parts and fingers all the way down to dust, water, and electric uh, uh, in water uh, into electrical uh, enclosures, which this is an electrical enclosure. Um, but the numbers actually mean something. Uh, there are two digits on there, uh, you know, right? You know, so like I said before, 65, which this is an IP65 rated. Uh, but the first number represents solids. The second number represents liquids. Uh, so if we start with the first number, say IP6. Uh, that rating rates from a zero all the way uh, to a six is its highest rating. And this is for um, solid objects getting into the device. A zero, basically, you can put your hands into it. And there's no protection. A six is dust um, tight, meaning uh, no matter the amount of dust you put this, the amount of dust in the air, uh, it will not uh, enter this um, product at all. So it is very uh, well sealed. The second number, um, which it represents this is IP65. So the five on here, represents the liquids. Now the liquids go a little bit different. It goes from zero to no protection at all, all the way to eight, which is immersion underwater beyond one meter uh, in, in depth. Uh, this product here is an IP65, so it's a five rating, which basically means uh, you can hit water at it at any angle, under pressure. Uh, the test has a, a, a 6.3 millimeter uh, hose um, that they spray on it. Okay, so the 7230, what is underneath the hood? What powers this device? What are the uh, components internally here? Um, to start, it uses an Intel 12th gen Alder Lake processor. Now this is a pretty big deal. Uh, the 12th gen processors weren't just a faster version of the 11th gen, it was a complete architectural change by Intel. And they introduced things called performance cores and efficient cores. So before you would say, uh, how many cores and how many gigahertz is the uh, processor? Well, now uh, they have different types of cores for handling different types of tasks, uh, performance cores or for, for applications that need to run very, very fast that are typically independent. The E cores are for a lot of the background applications that got in the way of the uh, performance applications uh, and kind of created a, a traffic jam. So it separates those out in the different cores and applications can move around, but that's a whole different subject other than need to know 12th gen processors were a major uh, advancement for Intel. Now there are three versions of the 12th gen that you can get in here. You can go as low as an i3 uh, 1210U uh, that has six cores, which would be um, uh, two performance cores and, and four um, efficiency cores, all the way up to 4.4 gigahertz in uh, burst speed. There's also an i5, which is the 1240U, which is 10 cores. Uh, with, um, uh, so it'd be four and six. So four performance cores, six um, efficiency cores, up to a 4.4 gigahertz uh, burst rate as well. And there's also an i7, so the 1260 U, which is uh, again, 10 cores as well. Uh, so four and six with a 4.7 gigahertz uh, uh, burst rate. Uh, on there. So those are the three processors that you get in. Uh, as far as the memory in the system, um, you've got integrated two slots on there. So you can go 8, 16, or 32 of uh, low power DDR5 memory, which is at uh, 520 uh, uh, megahertz on that. 
Um, I do want to caution you, right? When they say there's two slots, these are soldered to the system board. So if you get a model with eight gigs, you're getting two fours or 16, two eights, 32, two sixteens, but that is not upgradable. So what you get is what you're gonna, gonna be with for the life of the machine. So make sure you choose that wisely. Uh, from an internal graphics, it uses the Intel uh, XE graphics on the i5 and the i7. If you get the i3, I you don't get the XE graphics, you get the um, Intel UHD uh, graphics um, on there, but it is integrated graphics. Uh, as far as the storage, you have an M.2 slot in there, a 2230 that takes a solid state in NVMe class 35 drive. Uh, you can have anywhere up from uh, for as low as 256 all the way up to two terabytes. So you got 512, one terabyte and two terabyte uh, on top of it. Uh, as far as the wireless uh, or the Wi-Fi is concerned, it is an M.2 slot in there, it's a, another M.2 slot at 2230. Uh, you have your choice of an Intel Wi-Fi 6E with the Bluetooth uh, 3.0, uh, 3.2 or you can have the Qualcomm uh, Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth uh, 5.2. And I do wanna note, both those are Wi-Fi 6E, uh, and that E is different than Wi-Fi 6. If you get the E, that means you get the additional band. Uh, the federal government opened up the six gigahertz band uh, to Wi-Fi to the public, uh, and that new Wi-Fi 6E gives you that uh, six, uh, six gigahertz uh, band uh, support. Um, there is another M.2, but this is an M.2 uh, 3040 slot in here, and that is for your optional broadband card. So you've got basically two choices. You have a Qualcomm Snapdragon X20, uh, which is the global uh, gigabit LTE, uh, or you have the choice of a Snapdragon X55, which is the global 5G uh, modem in there. Uh, in other countries that are supporting eSIM, you can get either eSIM or the um, or the SIM itself. Uh, another feature internally underneath the hood is this unit comes standard with U-Blocks GPS included. Uh, so U-Blocks uh, GPS, worth a, a little bit of discussion. Um, you think about your cellular card and your cell phone, uh, that type of GPS is called AGPS or assisted GPS, which means it uses the uh, cell towers in conjunction with satellites to figure out your positioning which is wonderful because you can be inside your car or inside your house and be able to get um, your tracking. Uh, where GPS, true GPS, is looking at the satellites and co uh, coordinating your, po uh, your point. Uh, that is the U-Box on it. Uh, why would you get U-Box? Because you gotta have a, a line of sight. Um, well, where if you're in areas that you don't have the greatest cell coverage, right? U-Box gives you that true, very, very accurate pinpoint uh, location and U-Box itself is extremely fast compared to conventional uh, GPS. Um, your time to, to uh, first fix, meaning getting yourself situated on the four satellites, is usually measured in seconds rather than minutes. So uh, that's wonderful. Uh, I got to say, on the other rugged uh, PCs we have, it's optional, but under this, the you get the U-Box included with it. Um, the other thing on there is the operating system. These are Windows 10 or Windows 11. Uh, more than likely you're using this, this video, the Windows 10 may be gone, uh, so it'll be Windows 11 and beyond. Um, and some people will say, well, why aren't we using uh, you know, uh, Android or something like that? Um, you know, one thing I really like about our rugged devices is their dual purpose. You know, Not only are they made for being out in the field and out in the wild, but they're also made for being in the office. So you really can have two environments. You can have You can go from working like this to working like this. Okay, we'll start uh, from the left and right. And when I say the left and right, uh, if you're looking directly at the, the screen itself, we'll start with the ports that'll be on your left-hand side, then we'll go to the right-hand side. Uh, but if I move it over here and you'll see, I'll get in close here, I'll, I'll show you, they got these nice um, rubberized uh, ports on here that kind of snap in and, and hold into place nice and nice and firm. Uh, but the first thing you're going to see are uh, two uh, USB Thunderbolt 4 ports on the uh, left hand side. And let me get right here and here. So two of them. 
What's really nice about these, um, they are USB Thunderbolt 4. They are both power uh, inlets. So if you take the AC adapter, it doesn't matter which one you plug in uh, to it, uh, it'll power the notebook. Uh, the notebook, by the way, is uh, configured with uh, either 65 watt or 90 watt power supply. And here is the, let me see if I can get this up over here so you can see it. The 65 watt um, power supply here. So you can see it's nice and uh, compact uh, power supply. Uh, but you've got those two uh, on on the left hand side of the unit. Um, you may ask, you know, what is what is this port uh, over here? Uh, this is actually the uh, fan of the unit. And you may say, hold on a second. I saw you uh, you pour water all over this uh, tablet. Um, you know, wouldn't that ruin the machine if it got inside the uh, fan? Uh, what's really nice about the engineering design of this fan is actually sealed uh, the fan itself and sealed off from the inside of the unit itself. There's actually a heat pipe that goes to the, uh, to the fan that pulls the heat out of the unit. So there's no connection between uh, the inside of this fan and the inside of the uh, system. All right, let's go ahead and go over to the uh, right hand side of it. And we've got some uh, additional ports over here. And some of these are configurable and I'll let you know which ones are, are configurable. But let me go ahead and uh, pull these. Well, let me talk about the, the ones that are over here first. First thing you're gonna see is a holder for the stylus. So this is a uh, passive stylus uh, that comes with the unit and I've got it on its cord. Let me pull the right end of that. And you can see a little passive stylus to work and it goes right back into its little cubby there. Uh, and above it, the uh, square looking uh, hole, that would be for a Kensington lock. Um, so it's a, you know, basically a lock that goes on there that's connected to a cable, then you can wrap it around something if you want to lock the unit down. Uh, then you've got underneath these two, um, you've got two more ports and the first one here is configurable. You can either have this as a USB-A port uh, or an HDMI port if you wish to have an HDMI port. Uh, the second one is a standard uh, USB-A uh, port uh, and then besides that is a universal audio jack port. And then below it, if you can see in there is a, um, a micro SD 4.0 card uh, reader uh, built in the unit. Again, you know, these rubberized panels snap in there very tight um, and, and hold it, holds it together really nicely. The top ports, and I apologize, I do have uh, the hard um, carry handle. Uh, on this this tablet, uh, it is optional. I'll go through the different types of handles and different type of accessories for it. Um, so it does make it a little bit harder to see. Let me see if I can get in there. Um, what you're gonna notice is there's one port cover here. And if I pull that up and open, uh, what I've got configured in there right now is a uh, RJ45. Uh, this has a lot of different options that you can um, configure this port for. I've got the RJ45. You can also do a mini serial port. Um, you can be, do a uh, Fisher port in here, the um, uh, the USB Fisher port. If you haven't seen those, it's usually um, you know, for marine um, type stuff like my fish finder it uses Fisher ports to you know, connect to my fish, fish finder. Uh, but the more interesting one is a uh, barcode scanner for 2D and 3D scanning. It actually uses the Honeywell uh, engine um, for doing the scanning. So I've got cameras that I'll be talking about that you can use for scanning, but if you want something permanent uh, with a trigger, um, you can uh, configure that with that um, scanner. Um, you know, again, it uses the Honeywell uh, engine in it. Uh, two other ports that are hard to see here, I shouldn't say ports, but they'll see two little holes uh, in the top here. That's actually your dual uh, microphone, so um, where the sound comes in. Uh, to the unit. If we flip it over and go to the bottom uh, of the unit, the first thing that's going to stand out is, you know, what is that port there? That's kind of funny looking. Um, it is actually our um, uh, what we call pogo docking connector. Uh, so in a sense, allows things to connect directly to the system and share all the uh, system's resources. Uh, if you have some examples, and I'll be going through this a little later, like I've got the keyboard uh, that you can attach to it to really make it a, a, a clamshell notebook. You can see that's those connectors are right there. Um, if you're going into a uh, docking in a car, like a, a police vehicle or an EMS vehicle, you can see there, those are the POGOs um, ports right there. 
The other ones that you're going to see uh, to the left and right, uh, as I've got of that, there's one there and one there. Those are two uh, radio frequency pass-through ports, and, and each one has two separate what we call elements to it. Uh, so a total of four elements you can take through those two ports. So uh, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, and US, um, not USB, uh, GPS uh, radio frequencies can go through this. So you think about that uh, Gamber Johnson dock that I showed here um, with the Pogo, um, you've got on the bottom of that, you've got your radio frequency ports so that'd be if you had your EMS vehicle or a police vehicle and you had external antennas on the car. So you can up to do up to four of those uh, antennas on the, the top. Uh, the other thing that's kind of curious, like what are these kind of big holes in here? And they're, they're just rounded in holes. Those are really to give it more support. So if I go back to like that um, keyboard here, you can see that sticking out there that goes into those those holes, it just gives it a little stronger base and same thing in this uh, Gamber Johnson uh, dock. You can see that there and that one there um, just gives it that little bit more support. Okay, let's start with some of the specifications of the front here. Uh, starting with the screen, it is a 12 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio, full high definition display, which is 1920 by 1200 resolution, uh, supports up to 60 Hertz. Uh, it's got a great color uh, gamut to it as a uh, sRGB 100%. It is also water and glove capable touch display. So you can set it up if it's raining outside that you can still touch it as well as if you're wearing gloves that you can still uh, touch it really nice, um, especially outdoors um, in the wintertime. Uh, it is anti-glare, anti-smudge. It is also polarized. Uh, it uses the Corning Gorilla Glass, so extremely strong. Uh, resistant to scratching and uh, breaking. Uh, it is a very, very bright display. It is 1200 nit outdoor readable um, display. So extremely bright. And it does support active and passive pins. So it comes with that uh, passive stylus here in the side that I talked about a little earlier, um, this one, but also there is a, a Dell rugged active pin, uh, which I've got here and I'll talk about in the uh, accessories section. So it does support uh, both of them. Uh, if we start at the top of the screen um, and look at some of um, the configurations here, one, this is a um, you know camera. There's also a camera on the back of the machine I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but this uh, camera here is optional. Uh, so particularly if you're federal government, you can get an option with no microphone, no camera uh, configuration, but most people get the uh, camera configuration. Uh, it is a five megapixel RGB uh, VGA camera uh, with infrared. Uh, if I go through some of the uh, features of it, because it almost looks like a spider, it has so many uh, uh, eyes on this thing, um, but let's go through some of it. Um, here you do have a uh, camera shutter door, so if you want your privacy, you can shut that and, and cover up the camera. Inside of there you have uh, your RGB camera as well as your infrared camera. Um, and infrared is used for things like uh, facial recognition for, say, Windows Hello, uh, something I use on my machine. I, I no longer type passwords. It uh, looks at my face and logs me into uh, my machine for me. That's um, what that's there for. Uh, the big circle next to it is an actual IR emitter, so it shoots out the infrared signal. Uh, next to that is a uh, camera status light. And then finally, uh, this here is an ambient light sensor. And it really um, is wonderful to have that because it helps adjust the camera when you have changing lighting conditions. Say you're outside and you're filming something and the clouds come in and you know, all of a sudden it's darker or the sun comes out and becomes brighter. It actually adjusts the camera uh, to those type of um, uh, scenarios. Uh, so that, that is the, the camera options. If we look at the bottom of this, uh, you're gonna see on the left and right side, I've got uh, Ford firing um, uh, speakers. I got two of them. There are two watt uh, speakers on there. So the forward uh, firing, meaning they're they're towards your face. Uh, there's nothing blocking them, so you get a real crisp sound that's not muffled um, in it. And now, if you look at all these buttons, uh, I've got a, quite a few. Uh, some of them have uh, are purpose driven, uh, like this here is the uh, brightness up and brightness down. So if you want to control that, you can do it from there. The volume up and volume down button. Uh, those are are preset. Then I've got three, which is labeled P1, P2, and P3. 
that are customizable. So I can customize these to do functions. And in fact, it's dual customizable. So if you hit it once, it does one action. If you double hit it, it can do a double action. So you, in a sense, you have up to six um, physical programmable keys on that. And I do want to mention, um, you know, you control these through something called uh, Dell Rugged Control Center, RCC. Uh, take a look out there. There's some videos even on my uh, site. I posted a video on how Rugged Control Center works. You know, um, it is an application that gives you uh, access to configuring applications, configuring your keyboards, backlit, night modes, window settings, your antenna switching, your GPS, and as well as these programmable keys. So it does a whole lot. So if you, you get this tablet, I highly suggest you downloading uh, the Rugged Control Center. It, it is of no charge. So that is a look at the front of the machine. Okay, now the back of the machine. Now this is the top and this is the bottom of the tablet. Uh, at the top here, you're gonna see we have a 11 megapixel uh, RGB uh, camera on here and it does have that uh, camera cover as well. It's what we call world facing because it's not facing towards you, it's facing the rest of the world. Uh, next to it is a flash or also a flashlight. Uh, I've used it as a flashlight. Um, I was at, out recording stuff and I wanted to, uh, it was getting dark out. So I turned that on and I used my, my tablet as a flashlight. So really, really nice there. Um, here is the power on button. Um, this is really nice. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is actually recessed in. So you can't accidentally kind of hit turn it on and off. You actually put your finger in there and you can do it blindly because you can feel the ridge and it pushes down uh, in there. Then you push down on it. So you know, protects it from that false uh, on off and it's easy to do without being able to uh, see it. Uh, this is hard to see. Um, you don't see, it. I can't really tell if you can see it in the camera or not, uh, but I got a little symbol here. This area here is dedicated for the uh, smart card option. So um, if you uh, have a need for a smart card, like if you want to contact smart cards, so say you got your badge and you've got to put it in and keep it in at all time, it actually has a sleeve that will, um, when you get that option, goes on here. I've got the contact list, so it would just be a tap to uh, do the do the login, and that's what the symbol represents there. That's where you put it. Or you can get it configured with no smart card um, reader at all, then it'll just be blank here, uh, nothing at all. Um, we've got here, um, I like to point these out, they just look like uh, screws, but they're actually um, mounting uh, ports. There's one, two, three, four of them here. And this is a seven, uh, 75 by 75 VESA mount um, on the back of the machine. <laughs> it gives us some really great features that I'll talk about and the accessories, but I've got like here a magnet mount that I can uh, put on here and, and screw those in or a really popular, uh, you know, hand, um, hand mount. So this is, you know, adjustable and, and you know, it goes 360 degrees. It can be mounted on there. So um, great accessories that we can put into this, uh, uh, 75 by 75 uh, SML. Um, we look over here, I've got the optional uh, removable SSD uh, in this spot. If you don't get it as removable, this is just a blank uh, section. But here you can see I can uh, open it up from this area. I've got to actually screw in there that I have to take out that I've accessed my SSD drive um, up to two terabytes. Uh, then finally, and, th and I really think this is one of the best features of this, this tablet. I've got dual hot swappable removable batteries on the back of, of the machine. So you can get it configured with one. If you get it configured with just one, you still have the slot here. They just put a, a, a blank in there, but you can always go buy a second one later on and put it in there. Uh, these are 35.6 watt hour batteries, um, you know, in this system. You know, the question is, you know, how much do I get uh, per battery? You know, batteries are always tough to um, put a measurement because it depends on how you use. But there are two measurements out there. There's Mobile Mark 14 and Mobile Mark 18. I think Mobile Mark 18 is a better one. It's more realistic. Uh, but uh, the Mobile Mark 17, you know, it's rated at 10 hours and 44 minutes per battery. Under the more realistic Mobile Mark 18, it's seven hours and 31 minutes. So. Um, you could go a total of, you know, depending on which, which benchmark, you know, 14 to 20 hours with two batteries on there. And that seems to stack up somewhere in between that. Most of the ratings I've had, I've seen uh, people do, um, is that. So it certainly can get you through a shift. Um, but also what's on these batteries is really, really nice is you got an, an LED indicator. You got a little button there that you press 
and it has five, I believe, uh, LED lights on there that gives you, you know, an indication of how much battery life you have. So if you're getting ready to start a shift and someone hands you, you know, the tablet, like how much battery life do I have? You don't even have to boot it up. You can take a look and say, oh, you know, I, I don't have any battery left or it's getting very low. And we make accessories like this, which are um, uh, external battery charger. This is a dual one that you can mount on there, but you can put your uh, batteries in there and always have fresh batteries ready to go. Um, and to get into this, it's, it's kind of nice. They lock down. You can see that, that locking mechanism. To remove it, I just kind of push it forward and, and up it pops and out comes the battery and here it is. And if I need to charge it, I'll you know, go put it in the charger uh, and it snaps back in. You want to see what the kind of the, the shell is uh, for it. That's what it looks like. Um, but that's where the second battery can go. And again, you, you lock them into uh, place. So um, that's the back of it. But you, know, you think about all the stuff that I've been talking about up to this point um, about this tablet. Um, and we really do have a great customer success story. And it, this is where we start talking about ruggeds um, starting to have more applications than in the past for, you know, typically you said rugged device, you'd say place, fire, EMS, military, field services, oil and gas, you know, even scientific research for people who are doing geology studies or marine st studies. Um, you know, that was always a perfect fit. But where it is starting to evolve uh, is, you know, one I saw, gosh, one of my customers uses these for their drones, um, the pilot, their drones, which makes a lot of sense. Indoor, outdoor, uh, you can get it wet, uh, you know, full uh, sunlight. You know, it's a great to control drones with. Uh, but the other one um, is a really interesting story. If if you've been to fast food lately, you know they know that you, they do things that are called line busting, or some some fast foods do line busting, and that's where you know going through the drive through and the line starts getting really uh, long, so they'll send uh, their employees out with tablets and take people's orders to get the line moving faster. Uh, the one customer uh, was using a, um, a iPad uh, to do that. Um, you know, they were testing out how well line uh, busting does and you know, it's like, well, it does great, but, you know, you know, looking at the tablet, maybe there's something better we could do. And that's why they're going to this, because you think about starting a shift, you know, do I have enough battery to get me through the shift? Is it charged? If it's not charged, I can, this, I can simply grab another battery and throw it in there. You know, something like an iPad, I got to go plug it in and, and wait for it to charge. So I don't have that ability to hot swap it. Um, you think about the screen being an indoor outdoor display. So I don't have to worry about bright sunny days. And I don't have to worry about cold days where my employees want to wear uh, gloves. I can still use the device that way. Um, it can get rained on, I can drop it. Um, so all those types of things starts leading you towards this is a perfect device for that, that line busting. It really solves a lot of the issues um, my customer was having with that. So what do I got here? I thought we were talking about a, uh, a, a tablet. Um, this is the optional uh, Dell uh, keyboard um, for the 7230 Rugged Extreme. Uh, this keyboard itself uh, turns the system in a sense into a clamshell uh, notebook. And I just wanna show you a couple of things real quick. You can see it goes to 180 degrees uh, down, uh, tilts all the way up, I close it, um, you know, carry it around like a, a regular tablet and kind of open it back up and and here's the uh, keyboard again let me uh use the facial recognition to log in uh to the machine there uh but very very popular accessory let me uh scan down to this real quick um so i can show you the the locking mechanism here let's get it in real tight so how this goes on and off as you can see right here, I've got a locking button that I press down and you can see red meaning it's unlocked. And then I just kind of squeeze together those two parts and voila, uh, off comes the uh, keyboard. And you can see that pogo mount um, on the bottom of it. And to get it back into the machine, I simply put it in there and you'll hear it locked down. And I press the up button to lock that keyboard in so it's locked to uh, the machine. Uh, so very, very um, nice. So I have it in this mode. Let me um, show you another feature on it. It does have a backlit uh, keyboard. And maybe I can get this to 
show up. Let me turn the uh, lights out. I don't know if that'll help or not. Boom, boom. And, and yep, you can see uh, that it's backlit. And if I do uh, function C, I can go through different colors. So I can uh, program the, the colors that I want. Um, so I'm just gonna use the basic ones, but if you wanna program um, it to be a certain color for, for whatever reason, um, uh, you can. And again, that's in the uh, rugged um, control center uh, that you're able to customize that, but it is a uh, backlit uh, keyboard. So let me get these lights back on uh, so you can see that a little better. Um, so let's kind of go around uh, the edges of this keyboard and show you some of the, the ports to it. I'll show you the ports. Um, I did forget to say something. You know, this is a rugged extreme keyboard as well. So it is as tough as the uh, 7230 uh, tablet. Um, and if you remember from what I talked about earlier, it has an IP65 rating in that. Uh, which means it's rated for maximum protection against dust, dirt, and water uh, ingress. So you can spray high pressure water on this and it's just as rugged as uh, the tablet is. So it is it is designed to be um, solid. But if we want to take a look at uh, the ports, um, when getting this keyboard, you do get some additional ports added to your system. So I'll come over here and you can see this is kind of a, a rubberized mouth that pushes in there and holds in. And I'm going to pull pull that out. Sorry, you didn't get to see that that well. Let me see if I can get that. There you can see when I have this open, uh, I get additional, uh, this would be on the left hand side if you're facing the uh, keyboard, uh, two uh, USB-A uh, uh, 3.2 Gen 1 uh, ports on this side. And if I come over to the other side of the keyboard, I've got, let me get that out. Sorry, I want to show you. Those are in there snug to keep water out of them and dust and everything else. Um, but I've got an additional uh, USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and as well as an RJ45 port in there. <clears throat> so in addition to being this backlit keyboard, ruggedized, you get a few extra ports. Um, those aren't uh, customizable or configurable. They um, they are the ports that, that come with it. So that was a quick look at the ruggedized keyboard. So this is one of my favorite accessories for the uh, Latitude 7230 Rugged Extreme tablet. This is the Dell magnetic uh, mount uh, for it. Um, uh, kind of take a look at it. You've got four um, very powerful magnets on here and you got some uh, screws on there and this is kind of the, the back uh, of it. You know, this is for being able to mount um, your tablet basically onto any metal surface, whether it be on, you know, anywhere there's steel on a, on a vehicle or any metal service, um, surface that you can, can attach to it. Um, so let me scan back out here and I will show you how that goes onto the tablet. Uh, like I said before, we've got four, um, um, ports here or, or, or um, this is a seven, uh, 75 by 75 VISA uh, attachment here. And this simply goes on top of that. And these will screw in to it. I like to, um, I guess if you're strong enough, you could probably tighten it. Um, but I like to use the uh, flathead screwdriver and just kind of tighten those down. Um, onto the system and it also makes it a lot easier getting it off. Uh, that's one thing I did find. So let me get those nice and secure. And there we go. So now that is a, attached to the back of the unit and you can see, you know, from profile, uh, what that looks like. And now, uh, you can attach it to just about anything metal. I've got a, a mount here for basically a car. This is a Havis mount. Um, and typically you would attach a device onto here by putting the screws on and, and, and connecting it. And sorry, let me see if I can get this up a little higher for us. Maybe not, I'll squeeze it in a little bit further, but you can see now all I do is put this on here and it is attached, right? And I simply pull off and, you know, uh, it comes off. I no longer have to, um, you know, screw that into this base. So you think about things like, uh, 
um, a forklift, right? And people spend a lot of money to get specialized mounts to mount the tablet on a forklift. Uh, this, you can basically put it on anything metal there and go. At the end of this, I'm gonna show a bunch of uh, different ways I, I mount it on things. Um, it's like getting a hammer, right? You can get a hammer, everything looks like a nail and, and you wanna hit it with it. Um, same thing with this, you get this and you look for everything metal to uh, attach it to. So I found some some pretty unique ways that I, that I use this. Um, one of the first questions I had, right, is, well, how strong is it? Um, I didn't see any ratings internally asked, internally didn't get anybody get really any feedback about um, you know, the, the power of these magnets, though they, they are strong. Um, one of my teammates, you know, kind of had an idea and said, well, why don't we use uh, free lights and just uh, see, you know, this is very non-scientific, but I just want to give you an idea, um, the power of these magnets. So um, before I show you this, I am going to lay down a cushion here because if I break this table, my wife is going to break me. Um, so we don't want that. So I'm going to start out with a weight here. This is a, um, we're going to start with a three pound weight. This is uh, 1.4 kilograms um, in weight. So we'll, we'll look at that. I'll go ahead and attach it to the bottom and sure enough, easily um, takes that. So not coming off. Let's kick it up a, another a step higher. We're going to go to a five pound weight, which would be 2.5 kilograms. And I'm going to put it on there and lift it up. Yep. No problem. Five, five pounds. It does that just fine. So we'll take it to the next level, which is now 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms. And I'm going to put that on there. And sure enough, 10 pounds, no problem. It still holds that. And you can see how easy it was for me to break it. I just kind of pull it to the side and, and, and it comes off that. Now I'm going to hit where it hits its questionable um, weight. I'm going to pull up a 25 pound uh, weight. So this is getting pretty, pretty heavy here. And I got to make sure I get it just right because I want all four magnets on there, not on that, that hole. So I'll go ahead and pick that up. And you can see I got 25 pounds, but yeah, I think if I go in and see, I can shake that off. So it's, it's, I'm going to say that 25 pound rating is, is about um, the max for it. But, just wanted to give you an idea of, of, of the power of this, this magnet. Um, you know, this magnet has been tested with the, with everything on the machine. Like I said, you can, um, you know, it's been tested in, you know, with gasoline on it, diesel, motor oil, um, you know, different types of uh, oil-based uh, furniture cleaner and kerosene and bleach. So it is rugged, just like the tablet itself. So you don't have to worry about this. Uh, failing in your environment. So that is the Dell Magnet Mount. Now watch this short video of, of everything that I, I tested it on. So this is the Dell rotating hand strap for the Latitude 7230 Rugged Extreme tablet. Um, 
this is really uh, used to make it easier to carry around uh, the tablet. Typically, if you're you know, doing things like uh, scanning inventory or uh, doing line busting uh, at a quick serve restaurant, anywhere that you're trying to hold the ta tablet and take notes, this is a wonderful um, accessory. Uh, it does have a 360 degree swivel, so this will turn um, all the way around. And I'll, let me get in a little closer here and I'll attach this to the tablet and show you. Well, let me zoom in real quick so you can see it. Um, you can unlock this as well just by turning it. You'll hear a click and this will actually open up and it acts as a kickstand and then you can go back and lock it um, in there. So it kind of has two uh, types of uh, uses. Um, so again, I'm going to pull out the 7230 Rugged uh, Extreme Tablet. And again, I've got the seven, uh, 75 by 75 VESA mount um, on it. I'm going to go ahead and, and put this in and it simply uh, screws into those holes there. And I kind of just use my fingers, but I like to uh, use the flathead screwdriver to really secure that. Um, I've tried to just use my fingers and you know, maybe I'm just not strong enough. Maybe other people could use it as thumb screws and do it, but I can't. So I use my flathead screwdriver to get that on and off. So that's on there um, secure. So now I uh, put my hand in there, right? And let me scan out a little more so you can see this. So I've got this is now, uh, you know, I can take take notes and, and carry it around like this. I want to rotate it. I simply rotate it. You can see I was doing that um, all the way around. So uh, really nice um, uh, design. It's adjustable, as you can see there. I can change the size of it. So if I'm wearing gloves or have smaller hands, um, you can you can adjust it. It is a robust polymer material that we use in there um, that uh, you know takes on a lot of uh, stress, uh, extremes, temperatures, and has even been tested uh, to exposure to chemical chemical solvents. So uh, very durable, just like the uh, seventy two thirty rugged tablet is. Um, you know, both of these are are are, are rugged. Uh, now to kind of show you that that kickstand feature, I'm kind of, I guess it's nice. I mean, you've got it. You mainly bought it for the hand strap, so you've got something else. So I will unlock it, and you can see it kind of pulls up here. So if I want to have it as a stand, now I've got a kickstand. I'll come to the side so that you can you can see that there's the uh, there's in kickstand mode, and then you simply close it up and you know, go back to locking it and it's locked in place and now that, that will come out. Uh, but great uh, design, really love this option. And again, that's the, the second uh, option for that uh, best amount on the, the back of the machine. So you've got a couple options for uh, handles for the 7230 Rugged Extreme Tablet. Um, by default, uh, the rigid uh, tablet handle comes, at least in the United States, when you go to Dell.com and you configure it, um, you got to opt out of it if you don't want to handle, but if you opt in, uh, this is the one that, that comes with it, which is the um, rigid tablet handle. Uh, very nice. Um, let me kind of bring it in here a little closer so that you can uh, uh, see it a little better. I'll get in here. There we go. Um, you can see it's it's very strong. You know, it doesn't doesn't move. Uh, attaches to the top. It's it's angled. I kind of like that. I did some video recording, um, walked around like this. It makes it very stable um, uh, uh, to do do filming with, uh, but nice just to be able to pull out and, and, and move. Now, some people say, well, you've got it angled one way. What if I want it the other way? You know, there's always people that want it reverse. Um, you know, this is attached through two screws, um, Phillips screwdriver uh, to get those those out. But there's one here and one here. And all you do is take it and turn it the other way. And then the angle of this handle will be um, on the other side. Now, let me zoom back out here. Um, you know, some people like that. Some people say, hey, uh, what other options do you have? Uh, we do have what we call flexible handle uh, for this uh, machine. And again, this is um, also very, very rugged. It uses that same uh, polymer mold, oh, uh, polymer mold um, which is tested for stress and extreme temperatures and exposure to ke chemical solvents. But the difference in this is it's uh, nylon on the side, so it kind of collapses down. So 
talked to a few police officers who were using this and they say they like this better because it, it's easier to get it out of their um, uh, backpack or um, carrying case that they have. They can kind of stuff it in and it goes in a little bit better. Uh, so that's, that is your uh, second option on there. And again, you don't have to get a handle at all. You know, you can have this configured with nothing and it's just um, square on that. Uh, this actually attaches, and I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, the uh, flexible handles. You can see on both sides of it, we've got these corners that have, um, you know, basically a bar in there and you slip that through and it, it um, connects in. Um, and that allows for many things. Like I've got a shoulder strap here. If you want to do a, a shoulder strap with it, you can um, use that plus a handle. It would go on the bottom. Uh, so many configurations for, for handles for the 7230 Rugged Extreme. All right, um, pins, pin support for the 7231. It comes with a, a passive um, stylist with the machine, which in a sense acts as a you know clicker, um, you know, like using your finger, uh, just a little more precise, but there is an optional active pin, uh, which I, I have here. Let me um, scroll in a, a little bit so you can see this um, better, zoom in a little bit, uh, but this is, you know, turn it that way so the logo is up for us. This is the um, active uh, pen for it. And an active pen really gives you the ability to write and draw naturally um, and respond. Uh, you know, it's very responsive and feedback. And it's got a little give in the, the nib here as you're writing. So it's very um, um, user friendly. It's got a good feel to it. Uh, this is a rugged uh, pen, pen. So it's not like your traditional. So this is IP55 rating. Which means it's you know ideal for you know um, to withstand dust and water and dirt and fog and you know the uh, harshest environmental uh, temperatures. So it is actually designed to be out there um, in that environment. So let me go ahead and well let me keep it scrolled in here. Uh, a couple of things that I found that was uh, interesting on it. I mean you've got your two uh, buttons on here, uh, but it has your nib on top here but it comes with five a pack of five replacement ones so those start to wear down and what's kind of neat is it's in the pen itself so if i pull it open you can see there that's where all the replacements are there so they're always with you um you know as far as charging this it does take a let me see if i can get this out here um oops, went the wrong way it has a quad A battery. Um, so you kind of have to unscrew it the, the you know, same way where the nubs are, it comes out. And you can see that's that's a quad A, so um, smaller than a, 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 a triple A battery. Simply goes in there and, you know, first question, how long I'm gonna get out of that? You're roughly gonna get 36 months of battery life out of there. So, um, you know, since three years, uh, that should last you. So nice, kind of all put together in, inside that pin itself. And let me zoom back out a little bit and I kind of show you some examples. You know, I've got here a, um, you know, just paintbrush, you know, on the tablet. And you can see that uh, it's very precise and it's also uh, pressure sensitive. You know, so the harder I push, the darker things can get and the lighter I go, the lighter it gets. And that's really a lot of the difference between, you know, what we call an active pin and a, um, uh, a passive pin. So um, that are, that's the two options for the 7230. Okay, for docking in a vehicle. So if you're a police officer, EMS, or even type of construction, um, you've got various options to uh, dock or mount the 7230 Rugged Extreme. Um, I've got examples here from both uh, Gamber Johnson and as well as Havis on uh, vehicle docks. And I want to make sure I clear, clarify this because uh, some people get this confused, uh, the difference between mounting versus docking. Um, a dock is a mount, but a mount isn't a dock. So a mount simply says, give me something that I can mount this in my, my vehicle so it's secure, uh, but it has no other functions. A dock, uh, like I have here, the Gamber Johnson, the uh, uh, Havis uh, car docks, uh, they actually pass through ports, give you additional ports, pass through power. 
um, your antennas. So if you have like a GPS and a 4G and a 5G and Wi-Fi antennas on the outside of the vehicle, that's what passes those through. So it is connectivity is what a dock would be. A mount would have none of that um, um, uh, yeah, connections on, on the bottom of it. And you can see, you know, I talked about the POGO. Uh, there's the POGO connections on here. That's how it communicates with the um, tablets on, on both these systems or both these uh, docking for the, um, the cars. Uh, like both of these uh, a lot, they um, both um, Havis and Gamer Johnson did an excellent um, uh, design on these. There are a lot of videos out there that we've made. I haven't made them, but other people have. And uh, so go out there and take a look at uh, both of them. I think they were both really smart about how they, they did the designs. They even, you know, I showed that magnet mount earlier on or the hand strap, they actually made it so that you can have those on and it still fits into the, um, the mount for your for vehicle. So uh, that's a quick look at both the um, Havis and Gamber Johnson um, car docks. So docking for the Latitude 7230 Rugged Extreme Tablet. Now I emphasize Latitude because underneath the hood of this um, is a Latitude system, just like your say 7440 um, or 7430 uh, latitude. It is hardened all the way around. Um, but why that's important is that it uses the same docks as you would on your latitude uh, uh, regular corporate uh, notebooks. So uh, you think about uh, you're out in the field all day working hard, uh, you come in, you got your reports to do, and this is where a dock comes in. Uh, when you have a dock, it gives you a single cable right? The single cable connects you to everything and gives you all your connections. So uh, the recommended dock for the 7230 Rugged Extreme um, is the uh, Thunderbolt dock. So the uh, WD-22 TB4 dock, uh, which I have here. So when you think about connecting, say, you know, two, three, four monitors, uh, I got a mouse and keyboard, I've got my ethernet connected in here. Uh, so I've got all these peripherals and I come out of the field from a hard day of work, I have to do these uh, dumb reports, but you know, the part of the job, I have this single cable that I plug into my, my tablet and now I'm connected to all those devices. So I don't have to individually connect them in. That's the general benefit of, of having a, um, uh, a dock itself. So uh, a little look around this, let me um, zoom in a little bit so that you can uh, see it a little better get it up here like this. Let me scoot this over. Um, so you can see, and I'll show you some of the ports. Now, um, I'm going to show you some of the uh, display ports um, on this dock, but I do want to let you know, the question is how many uh, displays can I do on this? Uh, with the 7230 Rugged Extreme, you can do up to four 4K displays off this um, dock uh, at 60 Hertz. Uh, you can even go all the way up to a single 8K display at, at 60 hertz um, with this, but you know, I don't know too many people that are going to do that with a, a rugged tablet. Maybe there's one or two people out there, but um, here are the ports in the, um, I guess you can consider this back of the uh, uh, the WD-22TB4. Um, starting over here, sorry, I'm going to look at it backwards. I've got two DisplayPort 4.1 ports. I've got an HDMI. Uh, 2.0. I've got here a USB-C multifunction display port port, so I can hook a uh, monitor to that. Um, then I've got here uh, two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Uh, I've got a gigabit Ethernet RJ45 port. Uh, this is where the power into the docking goes in. So it comes with um, this 180 watt power adapter that I've got here the plugs in that delivers up to 130 watts of power out to the uh, notebook. You don't need necessarily that much to the uh, uh, rugged extreme, but it has that capability of going that high. And then finally on the uh, end here, I've got the two Thunderbolt 4 uh, ports on here. So uh, a lot of ports in the front. If I turn it around and look at the, or actually the back, if I turn around and look at the front of it, I've got a USB-C uh, um, 3.2 Gen 2 port and a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port with power share, so you can get um, power um, out of that device. Uh, on the top, you can see there's a power on button, um, but to note, you can change this in the configuration. If you plug this into your uh, 7230 Rugged uh, tablet, 
it will automatically power on um, the um, uh, the WD twenty two TB four. So you don't have to look for this power button uh, to turn it on. You plug it into any of the um, Thunderbolt ports that you have on here, automatically boots and you're connected. Um, so that is it. Let me show you what a uh, configuration uh, looks like. Okay, check out how awesome this setup is here. Um, I've got my 7230 Rugged Extreme tablet. I've got a single cable over here. If you can see in that single cable is going to the WD22 uh, TB4 Thunderbolt dock. Off this dock, I'm delivering power into my notebook. If I had Ethernet in there, I'd be bringing Ethernet in as well, but also connecting to all these other peripherals. So I walked in the office, plugged in one thing, and now I'm connected to here. In this case, I've got dual 27 inch 4K IPS black displays. These are the um, U2723 QE displays, awesome displays. Um, I've got a mouse and keyboard. The keyboard is the uh, KB900. Uh, Zoom collaboration keyboard, another awesome keyboard to worth a review for me um, here soon. And I've got the MS900 premium wireless mouse uh, connected in. And on top here, I've got the Dell Pro webcam, uh, the 2K webcam, the uh, WB5023. Uh, but again, all I did is walk in the office, plug in one cable, and I'm connected to everything. So that is the advantage of having a uh, WD22 TB4 dock with your tablet. Well, that's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on the uh, 7230 Rugged Extreme tablet. If you have any questions, just put it in the comment sections. I'll try to get to it as quick as I can. Sometimes I'm really quick. Sometimes it takes me a, a week or so to get to it, uh, but certainly leave it in there. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again. This is Mike Lohanian, Client Technology Specialist from Dell.